I'm going to do an exercise here with you that demonstrates just how important it is to be very careful and mindful when you're learning something. I've done this exercise for many years with my piano students, and I, I really have them do this exercise one step at a time, and they do the steps as we go through them. So I want you to do the steps as well. You're going to pause at each little step along the way and do each thing and then unpause and keep going and, and hear what else I have to say and what else I and see what else I have to show. Uh, and the point of doing this exercise is so that you, you know the value of, of good quality practice. And when I say no, I mean not just know in your head, because I could just tell you something right now in five seconds, and then you would know it in your head. I want you to know it in your bones. I want you to know it deeply in your experience and actually doing this exercise, actually doing all the steps of this exercise, that's what's going to give you that experience so that you really know it deeply. It's also a bit of a fun exercise that involves some drawing. And so I need you to get a piece of paper, blank paper, like a letter size piece of paper. You and then you're also gonna need um, two things to write with. One, small and thin, like a pen or a pencil. I'll just say pen from now on, but it could be a pen or a pencil. Um, and then one, something thick, like a marker or a highlighter. And from now on, I'll say marker, but it could be either. You got, you got your thin thing and your thick thing. And I'm going to do this exercise here on the computer, which is actually harder to do. And I won't be as good at it um, as I would be on paper. And it'll just actually kind of underscore the importance of what we're talking about. So here's my piece of paper. And you're going to hold your piece of paper sideways, just like my piece of paper is sideways. And you're going to take your pen and just draw a line down the middle to divide it into two halves. And now, um, give me a second to draw these two shapes before you do anything so that you can see what we're trying to uh, do here to get off to a good start. Uh, on this side, the left side, I'm going to draw a small shape near the middle that's sort of like a circle, but a bit irregular. It's important that it be small so that there's a lot of space around it for us to continue to work with. And it's important that it be not too complex. Don't make it very complex, just a little bit irregular like mine was. And then over here on the right side, I'm going to do the same thing, not the same shape, but something sort of, you know, a little, a little irregular. Um, there we are. So now it looks kind of like these two uh, slightly different irregular eyes looking out the page at us. Okay. And so now, what are these things? These are the shapes for two racetracks that are about to be built. They could be racetracks for uh, cars or motorcycles or people who run or anything at all that you can think of that might race on a racetrack. We'll just refer to them as the, the racers, okay? Um, so before the racers can race on the racetrack, we've got to build the racetracks. And so we're going to get out the construction crew. And the construction crew is going to be your marker. Okay. So you get out your marker. And this construction crew over here on the left, construction crew number one, they love racing. And when they build their uh, lanes of their racetracks, they like to do it as if they're racing. So there, okay, they just built lane number one. And I just raced around that shape, did my best while racing to match that shape. So you go ahead and, and do that. And then when you're done with that, now we're gonna switch over to racetrack number two the construction crew number two, they like to go carefully. And so they start and they take their time and they go around 
the outline of the shape that they know is supposed to be the shape of the racetrack. And there we go. Okay, so you go ahead and do that and take your time. Now you'll see that I had a couple of little imperfect spots. Um, I would have been better at that if I was doing it on paper. Um, but, but you see that I definitely got the shape much more accurate than racetrack construction crew number one over there did, right? It also took me a lot more time. It took me a lot more time to do lane one over here than it did over there. Okay, now, you know what? We're gonna uh, test it out, okay? Uh, so get your, get your uh, pencil out again, okay? And I'm gonna use a different color so, to highlight this uh, so that you can really, we can really see the differences between the racers who are trying out the track and the track itself, okay? And so I've got a racer and I'm gonna try out racetrack number one and racer number one is going to race around the track. All right, let's see. Hmm. Racer number one was on the track here, off the track a lot, on a little bit here, way off here, on for a bunch here. That was almost a straight line. That made it a lot easier for me to stay on at that point. Uh, and then way off here. So I spent a lot more time, I think, uh, off the track than on, okay, racer number one. Uh, let's try racer uh, number one over here on race track number two, the one that was where that lane was built more carefully. Um, but this is but this is not a construction crew, this is a racer. And so this racer is gonna race, this is gonna go quickly. Okay, so I went quickly. Let's see, how did I do? Well, I did, I did go off the track here. Um, I think I actually went off a little over here as well, but a lot of the time I, I was able to stay on it better. Well, that's okay, that's pretty good. I got better results there. Um, not perfect, but better. All right, let's uh, let's see if if you uh, are ready. If you're not, you should be pausing to do these steps. But we're, I'm going to assume you're ready. We're going to get out our markers again, our thick things, and we're going to do lane number two. So racetrack construction crew number one over here on the left. Okay, that was my lane number two. Um, you go ahead and do yours racing around. It should be on the outside, right? It's got to be outside of lane number one because the lanes go like boom, boom, boom. They, you know, concentric rings, right? Concentric shapes. They all are centered around the same thing, but getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So lane number two now over here, if you want, you can watch me or you can just draw along with me. You, I think you know what to do. We're going to go carefully around here and try and i'm gonna tr i'm trying to have it be like right up against it so that there's no space in between because that's what it would be on a real racetrack right they'd be right next to each other okay so there i got it i had a few little gaps little small gaps but i but i did it once again this side took a lot less time this side took a lot more time let's get our racer our pen or pencil out and we're going to try this again all right, I'm going to try. And you know what? We're going to make the racer's job a little easier now. The racer does not have to stay in lane two. Okay, the racer just has to stay on the track. Okay, so as long as it's on the track, does it could be lane two, some lane one, some back and forth, doesn't matter. So the racer has an easier job now. All right, let's see how the racer does this time. Hmm, that racer went around pretty quickly. Wow, stayed off the track a lot, off the track a lot, off the track a lot. Here is a nice little stretch on the track. That was kind of a sort of a straight line. Okay, mostly off the track again. Now let's go over here to this racetrack over here on the right. And the racer is gonna race around once again, quickly. That's the, what racers do, right? Gonna race around and try this. Ooh, my racer got a little greedy and, and ended up off the track, but I did stay on the track for a couple of good, good spots here. All right. Well, hmm, you know, this, this track is not done, you know, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's not quite ready for racers to be racing on it. Maybe we just need more lanes. So here's what I want you to do now. And I, and I'm re I'm going to ask you to definitely pause the video in a moment. What I want you to do, we're gonna, uh, we, we could go back and forth like this many times 
in a row, but we're gonna sort of speed up the process a little bit in this way. Um, I'll show you everything over here on, on this side, racetrack number one on the left. I'm gonna do track number three, I'm sorry, lane number three, and lane number four, and lane number five, and lane number six. I'm gonna do one more lane, cause ooh, I kind of went off the paper. Okay, lane number seven, well, that was all I could fit on this half of the paper, so fine. Uh, well, let's just say we're for now, we're gonna say that's that's all we need. Let's say seven lanes, okay? And now what I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a short, I'm gonna take a little shortcut and say lane three, lane four would be there, lane five would be there, lane six would be there, and lane seven would be there. And so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pretend that I did all those other lanes and I'm gonna draw lane seven as honestly as I can, imagining that um, the other lanes were there and trying to think like, well, where, where would lane seven actually be? Okay. And so you, now that's what I'm doing to, to speed up the process here. You could either do the same as me and uh, do it like that. And then you could just color this whole area in solid because that's what it would be, right? Because all those lanes would have been done. Um, or if you want, and I encourage you to do this if you're willing to take the time, pause the video and actually draw slowly and carefully, lane three, lane four, lane five, lane six, lane seven, so that you have it for real, okay? But either way, when you're done and you've got up to lane seven on both, and it'll look probably something like this because you were always trying to draw each lane outside the last one. Then you're going to get out your racer again. Okay, here comes my racer, my racer, my thin pen or pencil. All right, and we're going to send them around the track again. So racer over here on track one, construction crew number one. We've got a lot more area to be in, but the goal again, like it doesn't matter what lane, the goal is to stay on the track. Um, oh, that was, I raced around. Oh, I really stayed off the track a lot uh, on for a bit there, just crossed it there, just a little, little length of it there, a little length of it there. Once again, really, you know, it's really when it comes down to it, it if I think about it, it's, it's not so different from my first try. It's a, it's a bigger area, but I don't even know what does bigger area mean. Like, when it comes down to it, all of my tries over here have spent a lot of time off the track and less time on the track. Um, now I'm gonna come over here with my racer and I'm gonna try to stay again, doesn't matter what lanes can go on, on, on among any of the lanes as long as I stay on the track. Wow, I had a much easier time. I stayed fully on the track that time completely on the track even here even when i sort of accidentally started getting close to the edge i i look i stayed right on the track and the whole this whole thing stayed right in there so i i once again raced around it's interesting like suddenly it's a whole lot easier over there on on this side on the right side construction crew number two has a track that's a lot easier for me to stay on even when i race around it Interesting. So at this point, well, at this point, I'm going to just say, like, if you haven't finished the exercise, finish the exercise. In fact, I'm going to say at this point, if you skipped any parts of it, it would really be great if you just pause the video and just go through the whole exercise for real and have the experience of it. I really want you to have the experience of, of, doing it this way and seeing, wow, it was really hard to stay on the track on the lanes there. And then going around the other one again, quickly, just as quickly um, and, and seeing, I want you to feel what it feels like when you realize how much easier it was to stay on that other track. I'm gonna assume you've done it all. And so now I have a question for you. Um, what, is the shape of the track, what are the lanes, and what is the racer? What are those three things when it comes to 
learning something. What are they? If you want to pause and think about it, you can, because I'm going to spring the answer on you in just a moment. I'll tell you this, that over the years, my piano students have come up with all sorts of different answers about what each of these things are. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they, they get it. I'll, I'll say sort of the right answer, or at least the answer I'm looking for. Some, occasionally, occasionally, most of the time they don't. Sometimes they'll label one of the other things what I think is the right answer for another thing. A lot of times they'll just come up with things that, are, that I hadn't even thought of. So you come up with something, I'm, and I'm going to imagine that you've done that, paused and unpaused if you wanted. I'm going to tell you what they are now. Okay. The shapes of the two racetracks, that's the thing you want to learn. The lanes are your learning process, which in the case of a piano piece would be practice. But we could just more generally say it was your uh, time spent trying to do the learning. And then the racer, the racer is, this is how good you are at knowing this thing when you just kind of assume that you've finished doing your learning, okay? Which in the case of a, a piano piece is you try to play the piece. You try to play the piece as well as you can um, given whatever practice work you've done on it, okay? Um, you know, th this could have been you're studying for a test and it's just information and the, the, the shape of the track is the stuff you have to study. The lanes are the process of whatever you've done to try to soak in that information. You read it over and over. You might write notes out. Anything and everything you do in the studying process. And the racer is like, well, what if you were taking a test? Like, what if someone asked you a question and you gave an answer? Like, that's the best knowledge you have, right? So whatever it is, whether it's a piano piece or something else, it's the thing you're trying to learn, the process of trying to do the learning, and then the racer is how, how does it turn out when you do your best with what you think you know? And so, well, what do we see now when we look at these tracks? We see that when you take an approach where you do your learning, your practicing, your studying, not very carefully, that what happens? What happens is when you then try to demonstrate your knowledge, you don't have an easy time because your studying wasn't really lined up well with the shape of the original thing you were trying to learn in the first place. And if it can't match that, shape really well, then trying to demonstrate that you know it without even being especially careful about your learning process is likely to end up doing kind of the same thing, just kind of being a messy shape that doesn't match the, that match any of the shapes really well. Um, and so this is the result. But if you're over here on racetrack number two, and this is your learning process, what happens? What happens is, well, you took a lot more time with your learning process, you're studying, you're practicing. You took a lot more time with it at first, but what did it do? It pretty quickly ended up leaving you with something so solid that every time you try to demonstrate your knowledge, it just gets easier and easier and easier. Imagine now, we're not going to draw them. I'm not going to draw them. I'm not going to ask you to draw them. Imagine now there were 20 lanes instead of 10. Imagine there were 50 or 100 lanes. How much better would the racer be here? How much better would your trying to demonstrate your knowledge be here? It really just, it's not going to get any better, is it? It hasn't gotten any better yet. It just, it would just keep, kind of staying messy all along. 
if you, but over here, if you've been careful, how much easier does it get? Can you imagine how, how hard would it be for the racer to accidentally get off the track if there were 20 lanes, 50 lanes, 100 lanes? It'd be so easy to demonstrate your knowledge. Like it would be, it would be almost impossible to get out of the lanes off the track. It just gets easier and easier over here. In fact, in fact, what we really see, and this is the important thing, is that even a hundred practices over here on this side gets you a worse result than probably even just 10 practices over here on this side. And once you realize that, that's when you realize that going slowly and carefully with your learning process is absolutely the opposite of a waste of time. It's exactly how you should be spending your time because when you do it even a few times, you end up getting things really strong really, really soon after only a few repetitions. Whereas if you do your learning process carefully, messily, carelessly, mindlessly, you could do it a hundred times, a thousand times, 10,000 times, and you're gonna just never really get things much better. And that all ends up pretty quickly adding up to a lot more time and work and effort than even the relatively small number of repetitions on the on the on the stronger side you know and so that's really the point here and if you have the experience of running your racer around these tracks that's how you feel it and that's how you know it in your bones you feel and you see how much easier a time you had and so in just a few minutes doing this exercise you can you can really get like oh this would be the difference in the experience with practicing a piano piece or learning whatever it is you want to learn. And so the, hopefully the, 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 the choice is clear what we want to do. I hope you agree. In fact, in fact, the one last thing I want to say about this is in our brains, what learning is, learning is using certain circuits in our brains and and every time we repeat something those circuits get stronger and every time we repeat something not quite perfectly well you know what that's actually not quite repeating it and so little parts of those circuits might get strong but lots of parts of them might not get stronger so think about what that means every time we repeat something it gets stronger and stronger and stronger so that things get easier and easier to do or to know. And every time we imperfectly repeat something, which is really not repeating it, it just stays messy and it doesn't get easier. You know what that means? That means that these drawings, these are actually pictures of your brain. This racetrack over here, this is your brain on practice and study and learning that's not very careful. And this over here is your brain on practice and study and learning that is careful. You literally are turning the neurons, the, the stuff inside your brain, you're turning it either into this messy thing or this nice, solid, strong, clean thing. And when you turn it into this messy thing, messy stuff goes in, messy stuff comes out. And when you turn it into this nice, strong, clean thing, strong stuff goes in and strong stuff comes out. I suggest that you keep these drawings close to where you are engaged in your learning process so that you can always look at them and periodically ask yourself, which brain do I want? <laughs>